Hello everyone, Dolph Norgel here again today. Well, things didn't go quite as planned with the migration to my SSD. Now number one, I'm just going to say, even the less expensive, crucial 250 mega, uh, gigabyte uh, SSD, absolutely phenomenal in terms of performance gain, perceived performance gain on my laptop. Honestly, I don't know why I didn't do this sooner. It is just absolutely fantastic. So if you've ever wondered if one of these cheaper ones is going to make a big difference in your com daily computing life, it will. Uh, I'm really shocked. My boots have gone from about a minute or so to less than 20 seconds, which is phenomenal. And actually, a, a warm reboot is even faster than that. It's more like 12 seconds. It's probably skipping some post stuff. At any rate, so it's really fantastic. So what went wrong? What went wrong was was the my Windows migration. So I used Clonezilla, and I I, I could do a video on it, but uh, I, I decided I was doing a test run to see how it was going to work. And so cl using Clonezilla was very straightforward. It was easy. Uh, I cloned my EFI partition. I cloned my. Um, uh, uh, all the Windows system permissions, the, the Lenovo uh, has some sort of weird recovery partition, it was, it was installed on there. I copied all that stuff, the Windows partition, everything copied fine. Went to reboot. My first inkling of trouble was the Windows bootloader. Couldn't find, wouldn't boot. said, okay, that's fine, I'm going to install MX on anyway. So I went ahead and I put MX on the drive. And so and when I put MX on the drive, Grub got installed. I could find my MX installation, no problem. Uh, update Grub, there's the Windows installation. Hit, hit the thing to hit the Windows installation on a test, nothing. Uh, I got the error that said that my hardware had changed too much. And at this point, I became pissed because honestly, I, I paid for Windows with my machine, with the license with my machine and I should be able to put on any freaking thing I want to, and I couldn't, and I've lived in open source so long that I've forgotten these kinds of gotchas. It's, it's, it's actually shocking to me how much I don't know about when, about the Windows world right now. And I kind of sort of remembered some sort of problem like this, and uh, Zebedee uh, over at uh, Destination Linux Telegram group, he, he, those guys were trying to help me out with it, I couldn't get it, and I do not want I, my, solu my the, the, the solution to the problem with recovery with the recovery partition from Lenovo was to make a, was basically to put the old drive back in, make a set of recovery disks, use the recovery disks to redo the bootloader, and then hopefully it would work. I decided that I very rarely boot into the Windows installation, so why am I trying to make it a first-class citizen on my laptop? along with MX, or with any Linux distribution for that matter. So, it has been relegated to the second drive. It has remained in, in the original partitions on the original spinning media drive, the original one terabyte drive, that is now in the drive bay in the slot, slot loader that I showed you guys last video. That's, it's in there. And I can boot from that drive Windows just fine. Uh, it does work. Played a little Neverwinter Nights last night. Everybody was happy. Um, so I have changed the way my original plan. So I didn't need to. I didn't really use. I ended up not using really using Clonezilla for anything. Uh, but I repartitioned the SSD, and I thought I'd show you that real quick. How that's done. Let's see. Here we go. So the way I repartitioned the SSD, it's got its own EFI partition. Now it turns out I could have used the EFI partition on the existing spinning media drive, but I went ahead and put a new one on the SSD. Because I don't always I want I don't want to have to depend on that spinning media drive being in the in the in the extra drive bay on the Lenovo uh, because I want to be able to have that out in case I need to use a DVD player for something so I can slide that out slide that in or actually I can put another drive in if I want to the the main bay of the Lenovo actually there's a little bit of flexibility extra flexibility that I discovered with this slot with this with this drive caddy what they call it. The main bay of the Lenovo only will hold seven millimeter thick drives, so very thin drives. This is a, kind of a problem for spinning media, but not so big a problem with SSDs. But the main, but Western Digital Blues, uh, I have one that's a nine millimeter, and it's also a terabyte. I really like the drive, but I can't use it anywhere except in my external, 
enclosure. I can slide this into the drive bay, get back up to SATA speeds, because the external thing is USB 3 uh, or eSATA, but I don't have an eSATA port right now. The it'll the the slot the drive caddy slot will hold a nine millimeter drive, so I can actually it holds up all kinds of new options and still maintaining the laptop form factor. So I'm really happy with that. But I needed to have all the actual bootloader for any my main operating system, which is of course MX right now. Uh, on the SSD. So I got me my EFI partition. That was simple to do. I got two system partitions. The one is MX and the other is going to be a test partition if I want to have a test install of MX or a test install of anything really. And then this guy here is the all important uh, data partition. Really all it has on there right now is my Steam games but the option is there to put more on there. It's a, it's a large partition. I can do what I want. And I did put swap on here. Now a lot of people tell me don't put swap on an SSD. And I did a little research on this and that was probably a good idea back when they first came out but the longevity of these devices the longevity of these devices is much much higher than it used to be. Much much longer. And not only that the SS, this I don't use swap all that often. Honestly, it, 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 I have to really try to use swap on this machine in my in my usage pattern. So I just I put the swap on there in case I want to use Hibernate. It will Hibernate to that drive, and that's probably really the only usage it's going to get is if I decide to Hibernate the machine. The other drive is still there. It is as it was. The EFI system partitions. I did take out. It's got another test partition if I want to throw another Linux on there, and it's got my main data partitions that I have to share with Windows. Um, I just left them all on there because they're large partitions, uh, and then my main dev partition because it doesn't fit on the SSD, so I, that has to be on the on the on the on the spinning disk too. So that's how I set the disk up. But I did. So I, I'm not going to show all the cloning that I did that I, I said I would do in the other in the other video because honestly I ended up not cloning anything um, but maybe we'll do another video on clonezilla if uh, if you guys think you might that might be something you're interested in so best laid plans of mice and men didn't get to clone things exactly the way I originally started out but I've still got my SSD in I've got MX blasting through it honestly my steam games load fast and my Windows partition, my Windows installation does still work. It just works the same way it used to off the old drive. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to mxlinux.org or throw up a post at forum.mxlinux.org. Stolfen Oracle signing off. Have a great day.